Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Story number one. All system science university rules and guidelines on Phrasian human relations. Written by Apophis Pegasus. From the office of the university president. Let us be frank, we support all sentient's ability to engage in romantic relationships with whomever they desire. However, due to the uh, disruptive and uh, frequent aspects of human foration relations, we have to put some rules in place for the safety and sanctity of our students at large, particularly the human and foration members. Number one. Starting off, the medbay has informed me that they no longer need a reason for the injuries sustained by humans and Phrasian relationships. A simple, my mate is Phrasian, will now suffice. Number two, to the Phrasian members of the university, dragging your mate through the campus grounds to your quarters to, uh, do whatever it is that you do is deemed in poor taste. Number three, while humans are known to be shorter than most Phrasians, Picking them up and hanging them on a wall to get them immobilized to initiate attempts at mate bonding is deemed highly unethical and an affront to their dignity. Subsequent damage to your living space is not our concern. Number 4. To human males unaffiliated and just plain ignorant of Eurasian culture and its customs, while there is a severe sex imbalance in favor of females, and polygamy is not illegal. Walking up to a group of unknown female Phrasians and asking for a three to four way in crass, disrespectful, and potentially life threatening. Number five. On a related note, new donations for the human tissue to the university's med center would be appreciated, given our resources have recently been exhausted. Number six. To all Phrasian females, while human males assign great cultural value to their reproductive organs, and we do appreciate support of couples, ripping their pants off in front of your brood mates in public shouting, Check it out! is just wrong. Number 7. Pulling a Phrasian's tail is advised. You've been warned. Number 8. Two human females saying the... I know who's gonna be yelling thunder tonight, and here, yeah, kitty kitty, constitute harassment towards Eurasian males, and may invoke the ire of their mates. Number nine, human male reproductive organs don't have bones. Number ten, human male reproductive organs do not have bones. This repetition is not accidental. Number eleven, we are now moving all members of the sound-sensitive Raxian species away from the old human and Phrasian dormitories. Your pleas have been answered. Number 12. A sword stained with the blood of one's enemies is not deemed a romantic gift in any human culture. Number 13. All humans are hereby banned from replicating the plot extract known as chocolate between the 10th and 13th day of every subcycle, for the psychological safety and ethical sanctity of the Phrasian mates. Number 14. All Phrasians are hereby banned from replicating the plot extract known as chocolate between the 10th and 13th day of every subcycle, for the physical safety of the human mates. Number 15. As to the inquiries on human physical safety between the 10th and 13th day of every subcycle, we reiterate, you made this choice. Deal with it. End of story. Story number two. All Science University Christmas Rules Written by Apophis Pegasus It has come to our attention that there are human socio-religious celebrations coming up soon known as Christmas. While we at the university are fond supporters of freedom of religion, we are concerned as to the actions of our human staff and students in preparation for the celebration. As such, we're instigating a set of rules and regulations before somebody dies. 
we aren't even pretending to be on board now. Number one, the Sporasians are known to get a uh, rebunctious during celebrations of any kind. We would greatly appreciate it if the human bondmates could wrangle them in somewhat. The university thanks you for your efforts, and may whatever higher power you believe in have mercy on you. Number two, under the Sentient Rights Charter subsection 2219, any created species are to be justly treated and have the option to opt out of any labor intended for them. As such, the newly created species Santus Salvarius is to be subject to those laws. Number three, we have heard of a project some of the human students are performing in the section of engineering department known as SLEIGH. We don't know what it is, but we've heard it has something to do with the beast from dimension 22304, so we don't like it. Number 4. The planet and continent for the university was chosen for its mild climate and agreeableness to the wide variety of species. So, while humans may desire altering the weather to create a uh, white Christmas, the desert-faring Braxians are less enthused. Number 5. Full-sized dragons are still prohibited. The excuse, but they breathe ice and, uh, but winter is here, are not adequate. Number 6. To whoever made this nanotech enhanced ice automatons known as Frosties, one of them has eaten Lectura Vetri. Granted, she was a subpar lecturer and her species is immortal, but still. Number seven. The human beverage known as eggnog is to not be given to the Dagonian species under any circumstances for reasons that the Galactic Federation are henceforth classified. Number eight. The bioengineering species known as Santa Hatface Huggers are to be corralled immediately. They are annoying, painful, and just plain creepy. End of story. All Systems Science University. You stabbed Karen! Written by Apophis Pegasus. Haytham stared at the blood-stained sword in the transparent case, put down his coffee, and took a deep breath. Clearly, this day was going to be a long one. Why did you stab Karin with the sword? To get the blood of your enemy on it. And why do I need a sword with the blood of my enemy on it? Cause it's Volnik, said he. Haytham closed his eyes tight. He had gotten away with a lot at the university. He had helped harness the transdimensional flying beast, injected himself with nanites, bioengineered giant monsters, even been instrumental in raising the dead. But this, this would get him kicked out for sure. Never mind that he didn't do it. Never mind that he was on his best behavior. The principal of the university was one cigarette-free day away from spacing him and several other humans as it was. Ishta, sweetie. What the heck is Volnek? Ishta beamed, her solid black eyes gleaming. I'm so glad you asked. Okay, so Volnek is like your Valentine's Day, where couples get together and they exchange gifts. One of the traditional ones is a sword, coated with the blood of ones of your enemies. Hence the sword, stained with the snippy witch's Karin's blood. Ishta, you can't just go around stabbing people. Ishta cocked her head quizzically. And uh, why not? You and your compatriots have invaded alternate dimensions, created a draconian violating robot, created hurricanes and snowstorms at a womb, augmented yourselves to outrageous levels, created a variety of monsters, gotten Professor Verity Eaton, invaded a planet, and raised the dead. You've given people contusions, abrasions, and acerations, early induced labor, and PTSD. How is Karin nursing a wounded shoulder somehow worse than any of that? Hatham had to admit that she had a point, but he had to at least try and give a defense. That's different. Those injuries were incidental. Yes, and Karin's bleeding shoulder was incidental to me getting you this bloodstained sword as a Volnek present. Hatham had stared at her for a couple seconds. In his mind, he could already see himself being dropped back to Earth his parents questioning why he was home so early. 
Well, Mom and Dad had a crazy alien girlfriend who thought it would be a good idea to assault some girl with a sword on my behalf. Anyways, uh, what's for dinner? His reverie was interrupted by vibrations in his pocket. Taking his phone out, he answered to hear Jim Texan drawl. Dude, so I hear that your girlfriend went all gladiatorial on Karen. Good for her. No, 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 not good for her. Even worse for me, remember what the principal said. You know about the disciplinary action. Oh, relax. I talked to some of the lecturers. They say we'll be fine. Some of the best students that they've ever had. Worst they can do is make us take Susie back. Bring back the sociolinguistics lab, offer a written apology, and send Patrice some flowers. You're forgetting that Susie comes from a dimension of giant winged tentacled monsters, which is where the sociolinguistics lab is, and Professor Virti isn't speaking to us since the Frosty incident. Well, when you put it like that, you make it sound so hard. Come to think of it, why'd she stab Karin anyway? Wouldn't Brad be better? He did try to make a pretty handsy pass at your girl. Well, she, um, she, uh, hey, Ishta, hmm? Why Karin and not Brad? Brad's still in the infirmary getting his face reconstructed. It isn't proper Volnek tradition to stab a weak enemy. Also, Karin called you a dummy who wouldn't know an intron from an exon if you gave yourself gene therapy. And she threw a beaker at you when you and Huang used up all of the electroporosis gel at the Godzilla thing. Hatham spoke into the phone. Got that old Jim? Uh-huh. Any suggestions? Well, uh... They were interrupted by a broadcast voice rolling across the university crowds. Hatham Gomel and Ishta Tenzna, please report to the principal's office immediately. You better go get that, but you don't know me, bye. Click. Hatham stared at the phone, then out the window to the principal's office, then at his smoking girlfriend who seemed entirely too calm about all of this, like she had some trick up her sleeve, or uh, was she just crazy? Ah, screw it, let's go. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.